Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this question that I'm answering today is from a very pretty old paper, June 2015, from the Edexcel um, GCE papers from M1, Mechanics um, M1, 6677 um, syllabus. And this question, I'm answering it because of a question that was asked to me by one of the students who sent me an email uh, through the channel. And um, he had some doubts in this in a topic that's similar to this. Now, the question he actually asked me about is a question on a locked paper, which I can't at the moment upload. So I'm going to explain um, through this question um, the concepts that he was inquiring about. Okay, so here we have a lift of mass 200 kilograms being lowered into a mine shaft by a vertical cable attached to the top of the lift, and there's a crate of 55 kilograms on the floor inside the lift, as shown in figure 2. The lift descends vertically with a constant acceleration. There is a constant upwards resistance of magnitude 150 newtons on the lift, because it's like in a mine shaft, so for probably from the sides is a resistance um, upwards. The crate experiences a constant normal reaction of magnitude 473 newtons from, from the floor of the lift. Find the acceleration of the lift. So, um, so what we're going to do is I've taken this diagram and I'm going to just draw all the forces acting on this lift. Okay, that we have. Okay, so all the forces acting like on the lift or on the um, object inside the lift or the whole system as a whole, I'll just draw everything in this whole system. So you've got this tension in the cable, okay? That's one thing you have. You know that it's accelerating and it's accelerating downwards, okay? It's, it's being lowered with a constant acceleration, it descends vertically with constant acceleration. You know that the, the lift has a, a mass of 200 kilograms, and you, ha and you know that this object has a mass of 55 kilograms, so you'll have their weights So you have the weight of the lift, which is 200 G Newtons, and the weight of the crate, which is 55 G Newtons. And you also have an upwards resistance force of 150 Newtons. And there's a reaction on the um, reaction from the floor of the lift on the block, on the crate, of 473 Newtons. Okay, now if we consider the forces on the lift there's also a 473 newtons reaction on the floor of the lift right so I'm, I'm i'm here i'm kind of drawing the forces that are acting on everything the lift and the um crate as well okay i'm drawing all the forces acting so there's also 473 newtons um, re um reaction force from the block on the floor of the lift equal and opposite okay so these are all the forces acting in the system. Now, there are two things that we don't know. We don't know the tension in the string, and we don't know um, the acceleration. And we have to find the acceleration of the lift. Okay? There are three different things we can do in a system like this. We can take, or we can consider the forces. So we can consider what, one of three things. We can consider the forces acting. Let's say... Consider the forces acting on the whole system, the system as a whole. Okay? And we can consider the system acting only on the lift itself. And we can consider the forces acting only on the, the, uh, the crate. Those are the three things we can do. All right? Um, in a system like this, uh, those are the three options that we have. Okay, just like when you have, like um, a car being pulled by another car, they're going with the same acceleration. You have, for example, tension in the rope. Okay, you can consider the whole system where you take it as one big block. In that case, you don't have to worry about the tensions in the string. You can consider the forces acting on the the car that's pulling. You can consider the forces on the car that's being pulled. You can have the three options here. So the same three things apply in this situation over here. Okay? Same three things. But the thing about finding, um, the considering the forces in the whole system, we have to know what this force is on the, in, the, in the rope. Okay? And we have two unknowns. We have the tension in the rope and we have the acceleration. 
Well, we don't know what the tension in the rope is. And if we consider the forces acting only on the lift, well, we have again the tension on the string acting on the lift. So that also is unknown as well as acceleration. Okay, so there's two unknowns again. The only, the only part, part of this which we can consider where we know everything except for what we're looking for is when we consider the forces acting on the crate. So in this particular part of the question, the only option we have is to find the forces acting on the crate. So I'm going to draw, okay, the crate. I'm going to draw a little diagram representing the crate. Okay, and then, what happened there? Okay, so there's, there's, it's a bit messed up, sorry. So there's the crate. So we're going to consider the forces acting on the crate. Now, the forces, if we consider the crate alone, we know that this crate is accelerating downwards with the whole system, with acceleration we have to find. We know the crate, its weight is 55 kilograms. So I'm going to draw uh, the force, the weight, which is 55 G newtons. And we also know that on the crate is acting the reaction force from the floor of the lift, as we were told, which we know is 473 newtons. So those are the forces acting on the crate. All right. And this reaction force that we have here actually incorporates the fact that there's a tension in the rope and that there's this there's a resistance force. And it also incorporates the whole system kind of thing. It's all factored into the, re the, the reaction force. All right. If it was moving slower or that that resistance was less or the tension was was more or whatever then that would affect what the reaction force is so it is kind of factored into the the system but if we consider the forces acting only on the crate alone those are the forces that we can see acting on the crate okay so we can use this to make it an equation of motion we can say, okay it's moving downwards so i'll take down as positive so i'll say 55 g minus 473 M is equal to the mass times acceleration, 55 times A. This is F equals MA. The resultant force equals mass times acceleration. So we can say the acceleration, therefore, is 55G minus 473 over 55. So that should give us our answer. So we have 55 times 9.8 minus 473 divided by 55 which gives us 6 over 5, which is 1.2 meters per second squared. All right, so that was the only way we could work out the acceleration because the other two options involved knowing the tension in the string, okay, which we don't know. All right, now for part B, okay, uh, we got to find the magnitude of the force exerted on the lift by the cable. So if we, uh, we've got three options now, all right, as I said. Now, for us to find the the um, magnitude of the force exerted on the lift by the cable, that's the tension in the cable. For us to find the tension on the cable, now we can consider two different options. Okay, We can consider, one, the forces acting on the system as a whole. Okay, And I think this would be the easier option. And we can also consider the, fist, the, 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 the forces acting on the lift alone. And both of those will be um, fine to find the answer, right? We've got to find the tension in the string. So let's take the case one on the system as a whole. So there we, therefore, we take the whole object as one particle. So we combine the weight of the lift, which is 200 kilograms, and uh, these as one total weight of 255 G newtons. Okay, and then you have the resistive force of 150 newtons acting upwards we could ignore now the re reaction of the floor on the lift on, of the uh, of the lift on the crate and the crate on the lift because that's inside the system now they cancel each other out all right and we know it's accelerating down and we now know the acceleration is 1.2 meters per second squared did i put meters per second one yeah second, second, second squared so, good all right now so now we can resolve the forces acting downwards because it's going down. So I'm going to say 255 G minus T minus 150 is equal to M, which is 255 times A, which is 1.2. That's FR equals MA. The resultant force is mass times acceleration. That's mass times acceleration. 
So that will give us our answer. So if I rearrange this, T is equal to 255 times G, which is 9.8, minus 150, um, and that's going to be minus 255 times 1.2. Just, um, yeah, so that's going to be this as our answer. So let's see what that gives us. We have 255 times 9.8, minus 150 minus 255 times 1.2 that gives us 2043 newtons so we should write our answer to either 3sf or 2sf so we can write this as 2000 newtons or we can write this as t equals 2040 newtons either of those is fine okay 2sf or 3sf is acceptable for these answers where G is involved. I always say the safest bet is to write it to 3SF because that's always acceptable, um, even if you don't use G, but as you wish. All right, so now, the other option is if we look at the, the um, forces acting on the lift alone. So we've actually finished the question, that's the answer, but I'm just showing you um, if we consider just the forces acting on the lift alone. This is to clarify this the question to the student that asked so if we looked at the the forces acting on the lift alone then i'm going to kind of like now ignore the um the weight of the crate i'm going to think about just the 200 kilograms weight of the lift you have the tension in the string which we have to find we have the reaction force or the uh, resistance to motion we have the weight of the lift it's like we have we're not thinking about this crate okay uh, but there is the reaction force if we're thinking about the forces acting on the lift alone there is the reaction force of the crate on the lift okay the reaction force of the crate on the lift if we're considering the forces acting on the lift that's going to be acting downwards okay so that's that's the 473 newtons equal and opposite to the reaction of force of the lift on the crate then you have the weight of the uh, the lift, which is 200 times G, and you have the tension in the string we have to find. We have the resistance to motion acting upwards, which is 150 newtons, and we know that this thing is accelerating downwards at a with an acceleration, constant acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared. So now if we um, take the equations of motion for this, so we'll take down as positive as it's moving downwards, we have the downward force is 200 G plus 473 G, and the upwards forces, so they're in the opposite direction, minus 150, minus T, and that's equal to the mass times acceleration, and we're considering just the lift, so that's its mass is 200, times its acceleration, which is 1.2. Now, that equation should give us exactly the same answer as what we got before for T. So if I rearrange this, I'm going to have T equals, and I'll have 200 times 9.8, plus 473, minus 150 and minus 200 times 1.2 and hopefully this will give us exactly the same answer as we had before so we have 200 times 9.8 um, plus 473 minus 150 minus 200 times 1.2 1 and that gives us exactly the same answer 2043 Okay, which we can then, as I said, express to 2SF as 2000, or we can express it as 2040 to 3SF, either of those who are acceptable. See, we've got exactly the same answer when we consider the forces acting only on the lift. Okay, and some people say, oh, what about the mass of this object? Well, it's incorporated into this reaction force that's of the reaction force of the mass onto the lift. But here we're considering only the forces acting on the lift alone. Okay, so we just take the mass of the lift and we consider the reaction force of that, that object on the lift. See, that reaction force is not going to be the same always. It changes depending on, you know, how fast it's moving, how the tension is. Well, the, 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 all those things will, will affect that reaction force. As you're going up or down in the lift, you notice that sometimes when you're going down in the lift, suddenly you feel a lot heavier and you, your knees press against the you know, more, more pressure on your knees on the, on the floor. And sometimes when you're going upwards, for example, uh, you're, you know, you feel a lot, a lot lighter as you're going up. So depending on these, these other factors, that reaction force will change. 
right? So it, the weight of the the weight of the object is not the only thing that affects this reaction, but it's part of it. All right. So that's where we take the uh, we look at the object um, as one whole particle. As I mentioned with the the uh, example of the cars. Okay, it's the same kind of. Um, we, we, a car being towing, towing another car, right? We can take the whole system as one thing, in which case we have to, we can ignore these tensions. We just take it as one object. We can concentrate on one of the uh, cars and only think about the forces acting on those, okay? And um, in that case, the tension in the string will have basically, um, will have factored in whatever's from here because it's affecting the tension of the string where it's pulling. Or we can consider just the forces acting on the other object on its own. Very similar kind of thing. Consider forces acting just on the block or the whole thing or just on the lift. And, you know, you can answer the question. In this question, to be honest, I think this first um, way here, well, you know, to do part B is easier because you have less things to consider. But the, per, per, both of them are perfectly valid ways of answering the question. And I hope that kind of answers the doubts that one of the students who asked about certain questions um, by email I hope that that clears up his doubts. If not, you can send me a message on the comments on this video or by email again if you wish. And um, you know, when the question comes, when I'm able to upload the question that you were asking about, um, I will definitely um, mention that also. Okay. And the moment I'm not allowed to upload it because it's from a locked paper, and um, I will get in trouble if I upload any of the locked papers. Okay. So thank you for watching, and see you soon. Oh, yeah, by the way, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist over here. And other questions from this topic of um, dynamics, I guess, connected particles. Okay, dynamics, I guess. Uh, yeah, connected particles can be found in the playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.